So basically, like today, I've talked about like, uh, finite field finite field implementations. Um, this is something that I, I've gotten interested in over the past like years year. Um, basically, the answer the question of like, okay, how do you actually how do you actually when you done a brass tax like how things how things actually implemented? And there's some really interesting stuff going on. Um, so one thing I'll kind of preface with, with as, as with all these study clubs, like if something isn't clear, definitely ask. When I first looked at these algorithms, like I was very much so like lost for a while. I was like, why does that compute what it says it does? Like, like th this is this is a common theme, especially when you get to optimizations, optimization things, is that like often things are done in very roundabout ways. So definitely ask about things. I, my goal is that people can walk away with an intuition for it um, and not just like have copied down the formulas because that's because the formulas themselves are easy to Google and mostly useless to you unless you understand what's going on. So definitely ask questions. So some context to definitely kind of remind ourselves of is, you know, what is a finite field? And we previously covered this in a uh, in a in a study club talk. Um, you know, the finite fields kind of the, the analogy about clock arithmetic, um, the fact that you can do uh, arbitrary uh, algebra and other kind of forms of mathematics on top of finite fields fields. Um, basically all that kind of was in the intro and I won't really cover that today, except for just to mention, just to mention, you know, a uh, quick reminder about what finite fields are at the basic level and the fact that they are very important. And so kind of our motivation, like, uh, which some of, the, some of this is recalling what we did before, but also kind of driving kind of further, like driving this point home, like finite fields are the basis for basically all the math we do in cryptography, kind of like similar to how you would work with the real numbers or uh, the real numbers in uh, mathematics in, in, in grade school. Um, and you would work in, and you work with, you know, uh, numbers of dollars and cents, like floating point numbers, if you're doing accounting. Um, well, not actually if we put numbers sometimes, but that's a different issue. Uh, basically, though, I see the like every mathematical field will have its favorite number set. Um, you know, you uh, and for cryptography, finite finite fields are like our set of numbers. We do everything everything over. Talking about addition, multiplication, negation, all these operations are defined in the context of a finite field. Especially, this is especially this is especially true in our particular subfield of zero knowledge proofs where uh, zero knowledge proofs are generally, computation side zero knowledge proofs are generally defined as arithmetic circuits. And so similar to how digital circuits, the basic operations are and or not, and arithmetic circuits, our basic operations are addition, multiplication, and negation. And so uh, basically fi the finite field operations define the basic language of how we actually put together uh, programs inside of zero knowledge proofs. Um, one of the pr problems, like one of the reasons why implementation is actually inter interesting and difficult is that real computers don't have finite field circuitry. Um, real computers uh, often will have uh, integer arithmetic. So you have add, multiply, uh, shift, divide. Um, those are the operations that are supported by essentially all architectures, although not, 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 not all, all, but like definitely, but the vast majority that you're gonna encounter are gonna have like basic integer uh, operations. However, <laughs> these integers are not um, in these integers are not uh, arbitrary length. Usually, computers will have a word size, and the word size generally defines how big of an integer it can handle at once. So, for most computers we work with today, you have sixty-four bit words. You have uh, you can do you multiply numbers up to two to the sixty-four. Um, although the result you'll get will be truncated. But essentially, they, but kind of the the point here being that like we have these operations in that are defined in real digital circuitry, and we need to take those operations and actually define finite field operations on top of them. And doing so is is not trivial. So, uh, we what, one thing we want really to care about in in, in terms of our uh, implementations is speed. And like you know, why do we really care about speed? I mean. A single finite field multiplication, a single finite field addition, is probably is is very very cheap. Like basically, you know, you might have it might be counted in less than a hundred cycles. Like less than like by itself would be incomplete and consequential. Um, the reason why we care so much about this is being the most basic component of our cryptography. Um, the performance of a of a 
of a finite field multiplication or performance of a finite field addition uh, affects is the baseline by which all other performance for our algorithms is kind of defined. So if we're implementing an NTT algorithm or if we're implementing a multiscalar uh, multi multi multiplication, which are the two heaviest operations in zero knowledge proof production, um, we can work hard to make the most efficient possible NTT or MSM algorithm that uses as few multiplications as possible or as few additions as possible in other operations. But uh, but it, additionally, you're you're always going to have to use these basic operations. And if you can make your multiplication, you know, two cycles faster on your CPU, that, that those two cycles get that 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 little tiny win gets multiplied over the hundreds of thousands, millions, uh, you know, into the into billions of of operations you're going to have to do over the course of a large NTT or a large MSM operation. And so, in the yeah, because because proving costs in general, like proving costs in our field, are one of the biggest barriers to act, to deploying zero knowledge proofs to the general public, especially on when you're talking about like proving things in the browser, proving things on a mobile phone. Um, we really care about making sure that these that that we make our cryptography fast. Making cryptography fast involves a lot of things. One of those things being having a really highly highly optimized finite field. <clears throat> so what are we going to talk about in this in this study club? We're going to talk about a few things, which are like big integers, big integers being a way to represent uh, numbers larger than your computer can natively handle. We're talking about addition big integers, multiplication on big integers, uh, and then talk about modular reduction. So basically, like where where addition, multiplication, modular reduction, essentially form your 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 the basis for your finite field. Um, there, we're talking about two different methods of doing modular reduction and when you might want to use each of those. And we'll also talk about some additional forms of multiplication, uh, like Karatsuba multiplication and, and Tomb Cook that you might use in, in circumstances, certain circumstances, uh, but aren't so common in the cryptography we see in the zero knowledge proof field. So let's start by talking about, talking about big integers. So the kind of what I mentioned before, uh, you know, all basically all computers that we all, all digital computers have a defined word size, uh, which is basically the size, how large of an integer it natively handles. Almost all computer modern computers we use, so our phones, our laptops, our servers, are using sixty-four bit words nowadays and can often handle much larger uh, integer values as well if with with specialized op operations. Um, but 32-bit 32, 32-bit computers are not entirely gone. Also, in the IoT world, you kind of never know what you're gonna get. You know, you might have some like uh, smart card device, and like for God, some some God for second reason, it's a 16-bit uh, computer still. So the basically the 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 basic point here basically is that any given computer has a defined word size, which is the large, which is how large of an integer it can natively handle. And if we want to, if you want to represent values that are larger than the native word sides, we need to break it down into a series of words. So basically, a single 256-bit uh, integer can be represented as uh, either what was that four 64-bit words or eight 32-bit words. And that's what we'll, that's basically what that's what you end up doing for like a curve. So, as, like if you're doing a representing a curve point. Uh, it consists of two to three uh, finite field values. Each of those two to three values are going to be represented as four 64-bit words, um, pretty commonly. Uh, in the case of the zero knowledge virtual machine, we have uh, we have the baby bear field, which is a 32-bit field. So generally, you can actually fit it in one word. However, we'll, occasionally we have to do we have to break it up inside the zkVM into uh, bytes or half words into 16-bit 16-bit uh, 16 values. Um, which would have a similar idea. But essentially, the, the core idea here is that big integers allow us to represent, represent values that are larger than the computer can natively handle by breaking that the large value into words that the, that the machine can natively handle. Oh. One second. Hmm. OK, 
Can folks still see my screen? I need to start presenting again. That's some kind of issue. Yeah, it's back. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. So here's here's a value. Uh, it's a number. Uh, this number is you know is not a huge number, but it's 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 a uh, in the context we're, we're going to talk about here, these are about the size of numbers we're going to have. This is a, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight digit number. And normally computers, like before, you have bit value words, 64 bits, 32 bits, uh, 16 bits, eight bits. Um, we are, we humans are trained to work with base 10. And so for the purpose of this presentation, we're going to use actually a, uh, a two digit word. So two base 10 digits. Will be our word value, uh, all the all the numbers from zero to one hundred, and basically we're going to use the human computer, and we're going to say that the human computer can work with values that are between zero and one hundred. Anything else, else is overflow. Um, what's nice about this for purposes of demonstration is that you know this number, uh, like two two and twenty seven million three hundred eleven thousand eight hundred thirty seven splits into these four words 27 31 18 37 which is which is fairly nice for like just like looking at it goes it just it splits splits evenly obviously and if you think about it like a, from a computer's perspective 64 bit word like taking a single 256 bit value splitting into 64 bit words is uh is very natural because basically you can split along uh bit boundaries and bomb or along bytes boundaries very easily just like we can split digits in a, in a large base 10 base 10 number. So the first thing we're going we're going to talk about is addition. You know, addition being kind of one of your, one of your more basic operations. So we're going we're going to add these two numbers. And if you're going to do this, you know, um, you know, we kind of learned a method to do this in 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 grade school. Uh, you you line things up in columns. So you take your 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 number, you split the digits out in the, in the middle. In this case, instead of using one digit at a time, we're, going, we're using one word at a time, which in our case is two digits. And so you put each of them in a column and then you add the first word, you carry the one, you add the second word, you carry the one, I like carry the one, sec the second word and the carry, carry the one, uh, the third word and the carry, carry the one, the fourth word and the carry, carry the one, then you have a final carry. And so our final value at the end of this is this one sixteen zero zero sixteen twenty six. Uh, value there. And this school book addition algorithm is basically exactly what we do for big integers. There's no, it works great. It's the linear time as best you can do. So, you know, school book addition is what, is what we use uh, in production for adding two values together. Simple. We're also, I'm going to use this basically as, a, as the first example of walking through an algorithm. Um, all the algorithms that I talk about in this presentation are kind of lifted from this great book that I really like personally called The Handbook of Elliptic and Hyperelliptic Curve Cryptography. It has a lot of good information about um, the optimizing, optimized implementations. It's called the it's 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 focused on elliptic curves, but uh, it includes a lot of good information about finite fields, which is generally applicable. So let's walk through this algorithm here. So the, the it takes takes some inputs. It takes a u value and a in a v value. Uh, each of them are n word integers. So in this case, n for us is four. So taking both four word integers, and uh, it's going to give us the addition result in the final value w. Um, so to start the algorithm, we initialize the carry the carry bit k to zero. Then we're going to go forward and this first step here, we add the u value, u0, v0, and, and carry mo uh, modulo b, which b in this case is the base. Our base is 100. And so basically just you, you just take the w value as the, uh, the last two uh, digits of the result. And the carry is the is the is the first digit of the result. So our result in this case of adding uh, 37 and 89 is 126. And 126 we split into the leading one, which is our carry, and then 26, which is the uh, the result word. 
and then store the store those into into the uh, w value so i do this again they see add the carry the carry the uh u1 and v1 store the the word in the carry uh u2 and v2 in the carry store the store the 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 result word and the carry and then uh finally u u3 and v2 i mean u3 and v3 and store the the word the lower word the carry uh and the, and the carry and then we drop out of the loop and we store we we move the carry into a a fifth a fifth word for a result and so we now we have this this result here this one sixteen zero zero sixteen twenty six just as we did before and one thing that's worth noting here is that the two inputs are both four word integers whereas the output is a five word integer uh in general in addition basically the addition results can be uh up to double the size of the original result and so if you have two values which might be might be their max value or might be more than half the value of of their their container basically so if we have two four word uh integers the result's going to be a five word integer um you can see you need to you need somewhere somewhere to put the uh carry um and this growth will become important later on so you know the other important algorithm to talk about is multiplication um in this case we're, we're going to multiply some smaller values um because multiplication usually takes longer and so you know, have smaller values to work with and so we're going to multiply 54 uh 54 12 or 5412 times th uh, 3629 now by if it's like a time because we want, i want to get to like the really interesting stuff i'm not actually going to walk through this algorithm here but i will promise you this is basically your this is a definition of uh school book multiplication uh, basically this in the same idea that basically here this algorithm corresponds to what you might do in your in grade school to add two two large numbers together uh this algorithm here corresponds to what you might do uh to in grade school to multiply to multiply two large, large values together um and the though basically it results in the trace of, of execution that's like this and one thing i will note here in the, the final value this 1964148 is twice the size of each of either input. Well, it's, it's basically the size of the the two the, the the it is equal to the size of both inputs added together. So the first input is two words, the second input is two words, the result is four words. Um so multiplication in general doubles the size of a, of, a, of, a, of of the values you you multiply where addition adds one word or really one bit. So this, this talking about the, the growth of our numbers here, this kind of uh, the doubling uh, of, of numbers upon multiplication, uh, doubling the size of numbers upon multiplication, uh, brings us to the next point, which is that you need to basically do a uh, reduction in order to get things back into a reasonable form. Because basically, if you were to, if you had a long string multiplications and you don't reduce things, you're going to go from having two word values to four word values to eight word values to 16 word values, you get exponential growth of the size of your of your your intermediate results. And that's completely untenable, untenable for anything beyond very small, small multiplications. Luckily, however, finite fe the way finite fields are defined is that any number uh, is equivalent to uh, basically you can, you can always subtract any number of uh, times the modulus from a number and the result is equivalent. So in this case, we have 13 times 1345 times 2501 is this large number. Um, but if we subtract 1000 multiples of the modulus, which in this, which in our case is the prime 2971, we get down to the much more manageable number of 673. And those two numbers, the large, the large multiplication result and 673 are equivalent for for in in the finite field they are the same number for our cases so whenever we have a multiplication result uh we will almost always want to reduce it down to um a its smallest the smallest positive representation and this is often referred to as like the canonical representation in fact you know if you think about 
a finite field value, this is generally what people think about is the um, canonical representation, which is between zero and the modulus. So how do you actually go about uh, producing this reduction? We'll talk about two methods. Uh, the first method we're going to talk about is uh, called Barrett reduction, which can be applied to uh, to the integers you normally think about. It's basically it's a, it's kind of it's basically your your maybe your first go to, and the second one we're talking about is called is called Montgomery form uh, multiplication and also Montgomery form reduction. Montgomery form multiplication and reduction is very widely used. It is what we use throughout our code base in the risk zero virtual machine. Um, well, uh, although it has the uh, this disadvantage of requiring it to be in a special format, uh, which we will describe later. But basically, Montgomery form requires is an alternative form from what you might refer to as classical form. Uh, and if you if you if you receive your 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 values in classical form, then that conversion cost is not trivial. And so you might not want to use Montgomery form if that conversion cost if you need to convert the integers first. Uh, in this case, you would want to use bare, bare reduction. Additionally, some folks have used bare reduction in hardware implementations uh, and elsewhere. Um, generally, the, the Barrett and Montgomery are, like, are not so far apart in terms of performance that they can't, all, that both are not useful. And so people, although Montgomery form is most commonly used and, and it's, it's usually the fastest in software, um, there are certain, certain people have found reasons to use Barrett reduction uh, in production as well. So let's talk about that one first. Um, an obvious way to basically produce a reduction is to use division. And so this like little Python-esque program here basically uses division to implement reduction. So basically what you want to do, like we had before, you have the quotient and the remainder in this, in this modular division. Uh, and the quotient here is 1,132. Uh, the remainder is 673. And basically, you subtract quotient times the modulus from the original value to get the remainder. And so in this case, to find the quotient, we can just do a, a, floored, a floored division. So basically, you say uh, q, the quotient, equals u divided by n. Um, and then we go ahead and subtract q times n from u. And that will give us the fully reduced result. However, uh, uh, re division is generally um, expensive and uh, compared to multiplication compared to other operations that we're doing. Um, and additionally, it's, you really cannot guarantee that it's going to be constant, constant time. And constant time is important when you're operating over secret data because if something is not constant time, then how long an operation takes can reveal its values. Um, uh, this basically, the, like, uh, time time based information leakage um, has been shown multiple times. Basically, be an avenue through which people can extract private information. And so, basically, if you're, for example, uh, producing a signature, this is especially important. If you're doing something like encryption, if you're uh, producing a zero knowledge proof, and you really need your data to be private, constant time is constant time is an important uh, property to achieve. And so. For both those reasons, we want to avoid division. So let's see. So one one, one kind of the the, int the intuition behind the Barrett reduction method is that you can approximate division by uh, doing by doing a multiplication by something that is close to one over n, uh, where n is our modulus. And so um, and this. I and in this slide basically I actually made a slight little notational kind of hiccup where basically M and R are actually the same value here. Um, but basically there's two different notations for the same thing. But there's there's this this M or R value. And if you uh basically if you want to approximate uh one over n uh to shoot a multiplication, you can take uh like you take your base, multiply, like raise it to the power of two, two n, and then divide it by uh, the modulus, and you have something that is close to the to close to one over n. Um, and what 
you the way you actually do this is is kind of in this formula below is we do like u times r uh bit shifted to the right by two to the n and the reason why or bit shift or really base base shift is what you can kind of think about here where basically in the in our, in our digital in our digit our digits a base 10 notation this would actually be a shift of digits um that 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 shift basically inputs the division and the multiplication basically uh allows it to kind of uh the multiplication plus the division allows it to be close to a multiplication by one over n which is equivalent to a division and now then you uh as before you take the quotient multiply it by the modulus and then subtract it from the original value and you get uh you get a mostly reduced form and the reason why I say mostly reduced is that the the actual final result uh will be somewhere in the range of of zero to um to three n let's see so actually this is also a mistake, but much, much easier to fix so zero to three n and uh you know we we don't want zero to three n we actually want between zero and n and so if we do either one or sometimes two subtractions, uh, we'll get down to that final value. And so in this case, what we do, as before, we do the partial reduction. Um, and then we do up to up to two subtractions and we get the final result. So basically, just like to kind of, to kind of reiterate the intuition behind bare reduction is that instead of actually doing a division by n, we do what, what we refer to as like an approximate division. Which will be a multiplication by a value that is close to one over one uh, close to uh one over n by virtue of basically doing a multiplication first and then doing a division and we kind of get within the ballpark of the number we, that we want and in the ballpark is is can be shown to be defined as between uh as up to three times the fully reduced result so that's which is which is definitely good good enough uh because all you need at that point is up to two subtractions and you get your, your fully reduced result so let's actually walk through the um the real algorithm and so the in this algorithm there is some pre-computation and so the main the, the value that you need to pre-compute is this r value uh, the R value being kind of the the multiplication number, the multiplication number that you be, that you multiply far, you multiply then the input with before you do the 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 right shifting, um, in order to get in order to make sure that 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 the combined operation of multiplication plus uh, right shift is close is approximately uh, a division by by the modulus, and so you can see the formula here is. It, it, you can see in the, in the definition of the input here, the R value is defined. It's defined as the base to the power of 2n divided by the modulus, which is capital N. Um, so in our, in our case, before the, the modulus, which you can see kind of in the, the computational table below, our input is 27, 31, 18, 37. So a four word integer. Our modulus is 2971, the prime that we talked about before. Our base is 100, as before. Our n is two, since what we want is the, the word size we want we want to work with two word uh two word integers at the end of the re reduction our r value is the is the result of this of this formula above so our value is 100 times 100 to the power of four so 10,000 or sorry not 10,000 um 100 million 10 million 100 million uh, I say 100 million divided by 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 20, 2,971, which happens to be which we we floor the value, um, rounding off the, the extra bits, uh, below the decimal point point, and we get 30, uh, we get 33,658, um, and we use we're going to use that 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 pre-computed value. So we do this before before we do any computation, uh, inside our algorithm. So now we have the input. And we do this first step here, which is this is the approximate quotient. So uh, just kind of breaking down this approximate quotient, we start with saying uh, we take u divided by a b to the minus one, which very simply is actually just chopping off 
uh, chopping off the last word. Uh, basically, so you can see this 2731.18 is equivalent to our 2731 .18 minus the last word. We just chop. The, the reason we do that is, you know, this is the more optimal way to do it. You do, it turns out that the last word doesn't matter, so we just get rid of it right away. Then we multiply that, our input with the last word chopped off times the R value, uh, which results in this much larger number. Um, a quick note that like, although we have these intermediate results, which are larger than we can fit in a given word. So these, these themselves could be represented as big integers. The reason we, I don't make that explicit here is because when you actually go, go to implement this formula, you'll do this uh, iter iteratively um, such that you don't ever actually have these large intermediate results. But basically when you see a large intermediate result like this, uh, you can imagine intuitively that it, you just represent it with another big integer, uh, many, a many word deconstruction. Basically, you so have this, this multiplication, uh, you get this, uh, this large value out, and then you do the divide by b to the power of n minus one, which is actually just equivalent to chopping off all of the, the first three words where, or the, the first six digits. And so we just take the, 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 highest, uh, the highest two words, uh, which is the, um, which is you know the highest the highest in uh, which is the 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 highest four digits. All right. So now we're going to calculate these these two values r one and r two, and when we subtract r one and r two, we'll get the partial reduced result. So r one is the highest uh, or sorry the lowest three words. We chop off the highest word now again because it doesn't affect the the end result of the input. So this is the 31, 18, 37, the lowest three words of the input. And then we take a our two value, which is our quotient times our modulus. So if you recall before, uh, basically this quotient of the modulus is effectively like how many multiples of the modulus we are going to subtract. And a quick note as well that like in, a, in the finite field, any number times the modulus is always equivalent to zero. And so this R2 value in the finite field is actually basically is, is equivalent to zero. This is basically like you R2, yeah, R2 R, basically adding or subtracting by R2 uh, doesn't actually change the number we're working with um, in, the, in the finite field. So we're going to subtract R2 from R1 and we get the, the reduced, the, the, the partially reduced number 2405. We will uh, check to see if it's negative. So if we went to negative, we need to, to add a multiple. We need to add, um, we need to add the, uh, the maximum value of our words to basically get back to positive again. Basically, this, this is just the way this algorithm, this is a way of formalizing the idea of that, like, wrapping around. This wrapping around would happen automatically on a digital computer that, you know, that, that usually the, that words wrap around if you do addition. And then, this the R value is not guaranteed to be fully reduced yet, so we need to check to see if it's if it's larger than the modulus. If it is larger than the modulus, we subtract. If it's larger than the modulus again, we subtract again. Uh, we'll have up to two subtractions here. In this case, there's actually no subtractions because we're 2405 is already less than our modulus 29, 2971, and so we're actually done already. And as a quick note, um, in Barrett reduction. Uh, the probability that a number will be below the modulus after after subtracting is about ninety percent, uh, or the, that the sorry, the probability that the most the mostly reduced result will be below the modulus is about ninety percent. There's about nine percent chance that there will be uh, one multiple of the modulus above the modulus. So basically, you have to do a ninety percent chance. Oh, sorry, a nine percent chance of one subtraction, and there's only a one percent chance of doing two subtractions. Uh, so most of the time. Uh, you're gonna have you're gonna have a, uh, the mostly reduced form is actually gonna be fully reduced as as is the case here, and so we return this R value. This is a two word integer, uh, twenty four oh five. All right. So before we dive into uh, and, Montgomery and has, form, there, just... there is a question yeah. in the chat. Um, someone asked. Oh, oh thank you. you. You mentioned the modulo will always be prime. Is that for crypto reasons or finite field reasons? So actually, the modulo does not need to be prime. Um, it does uh, for these algorithms. So this algorithm will work with any modulus. Uh, 
it if in cryptography you generally do want to be prime because if it's not prime it's not a finite field uh at least not technically um this is we talked about the clock math before if you do the 12 o'clock math uh you end up with like four has no inverse and this is this property is true of any non-prime uh non-prime modulus and so only prime power only prime modulus form a simple finite field and if you want if you have prime power modulus uh or if you have a if you want a field finite field of prime power order so like instead of being set a field of modulus seven it could be a field modulus seven squared uh well not modulus seven squared but basically of order seven squared you can you can define this as well but basically um finite fields must have an order which in the case of a prime power is just the modulus is just the uh the modulus itself uh of, that is prime yeah but yeah so uh but but the reason why it's why why we use big n here uh in this in this algorithm to clear is that it does not need to be prime it can be any number we want and thanks for calling the chat and i want to actually stop right now because we went through the first like the first complicated kind of part of this like first reduction formula one of the ones that took me a bit to understand myself. One stop for questions. So if anyone else has a question as well, I definitely wanted to, to give time for that. Okay. Can we have more than two more than two subtractions in step four? Is that the reason why we are using a while loop? Uh, otherwise, we could have maximum just checked. If R is greater than or equal to N two, R equals R minus uh, N once. Then again, and if if R is still greater than or equal to N, then R equals R minus N and stop. Is it possible that we can still go beyond this? Uh, no, there there will only ever be uh, up to two subtractions, and so the while loop basically is just an artifact of it's simple to write it that way. Um, yeah, and also the fact that like well, yeah, basically that's just the way it's written here. Uh, if you were to write it in code, it'd be perfectly valid to say to use two if statements and check check once, check twice, uh, if you want to do that way instead. Um, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's talk about uh, Montgomery form. So this is the other major uh Montgomery form reduction and multiplication is the other major way we get or, 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 or we re can reduce numbers to get them back into the canonical, canonical representation um one of the things about Montgomery form is it's called Montgomery form because it is an alternate finite field representation uh this alternate finite field representation enables a a fast combined multiplication and reduction algorithm um but does require you to basically do some pre-processing to get your numbers into this representation. So what is the Montgomery form? So when you think about finite field elements, you know, classically they're represented as numbers from zero to the modulus. Um, so like this is kind of the most intuitive way I think about finite field, but and it's not, that's not the only way I think about it. Montgomery representation basically represents things, numbers as, uh, their their classical representation times r uh mod n and so basically the number actually will still be uh the, rep the representation will still be a number from zero to the modulus so it's still for example a 200, 256 bit number if it was before however uh it is it is it is it is all is stored with this like r value kind of mixed in you might say um and we'll kind of show why this that we do this later um, because it is mixing in, mixing in this R value allows us to do, uh, like I said before, kind of a faster um, multiplicate, com combined multiplication reduction. Um, so one thing before we talk about Montgomery reduction is that the Montgomery reduction algorithm is actually just a little bit different than the Barrett reduction algorithm that we saw before. And in particular, it does not actually calculate the reduction itself. It actually calculates the reduction, it, reduc it calculates a reduction and multiplication by this R value at the same time. And so the result of this uh, of this reduce reduction algorhythm uh, notated here as REDC 
um, is u times r r inverse mod n. Um, and again, we'll kind of we'll this we'll talk about why this is later. It seems a little funky. It's like, hmm, why would I want something that like calculates u times r like r inverse? Like doesn't seem that useful. Uh, but we'll have we'll we'll try to build the intuition for why we want we want this or why it's useful. Uh, and actually, let's let's skip straight to that instead. Um, so basically, uh, this reduction makes, basically this reduction formula can be used to uh, to define multiplication, as you can see at the bottom here. Um, x times x times r mod p. So this is the Montgomery representation of x. So this is x x in square brackets, uh, as no noted in the line above, times y r mod p, which p uh, is, in this case is our modulus. To be, just to be clear. Um, times r to the negative one mod p is x, y, uh, r mod p, where x, y, r mod p is x is the Montgomery form notation for x, x, y, because it has a single r mixed in as before. And so what's kind of interesting here basically is basically if you multiply, if you do a school book addition, a school book multiplication, just class multiplication of two Montgomery values, and then you do this Montgomery reduction, which implicitly multiplies by r inverse, you get the Montgomery representation of the result value. And so what this does, is it basically allows us to define a multiplication formula, which multiplies, which multiplies two Montgomery representation numbers and gives you the Montgomery representation of their, adult, of their result. Um, so the reason, so this is kind of, this kind of motivates the reason why we want to have this alternative, why this alternate reduction formula is, is useful is because it allows us to basically define what you what basically an isomorphic uh, representation of, of numbers and basically that has its own kind of multiplication that gives you that stays within this 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 form and this multiplication is slightly more this multiplication plus reduction is more efficient than uh, the classical form of the same algorithm. So that's kind of the intuition why reduction is also used to get two uh, reduction can also be used. The REDC formula can also be used to get to into Montgomery representation from classical. It can also be used to, to convert from classical, or sorry, to get to Montgomery from classical or from Montgomery back to classical again. All right, so now let's actually talk walk through this out this algorithm. So as kind of before, there is a pre computation step, um, which which basically gives us uh, some values we need. So in this case, the R value, which to be clear, it's not the same R value as before, uh, but R, R value in this case is uh, simply uh, our base to the power of n. So n is our is the number of words in our integers we're working with in our in our multiplication inputs. Uh, in which case, we're, we're, we as before we're working with two word. Um, we want or we want two word. Uh, inputs and outputs. So we're reducing to that much. And in this case, so our, our, our value then is 10,000 or 100 to the power of 100 squared. Um, we need this, we need, we need a special value, which is, uh, which is referred to as n prime or negative n to the negative n inverse. And that value here is six is 69 um, or negative n inverse mod, uh, mod our base, so mod 100. So basically, just take the last two digits of negative uh, negative one uh, inverse, and uh, we take that value, which is sixty nine in this case, uh, and we're going to we're going to use that within our algorithm. And this is a constant that is used that is determined by our modulus and our R value, and can be uh, can be pre computed before we ever start we, before we ever start uh, the algorithm, and so. We're going to go now. We're going to go into the algorithm, and I'll try to kind of explain the intuition behind uh, this inverse value and all the operations that go on here. Uh, but the first step in this algorithm is simply copy your input into your output. So we start the t equals the output. Um, in our in the first loop, uh, in the first iteration of the loop, which we're going to iterate from zero to n minus one. So we're going to just do zero and one in this case. We calculate this k value. And k is uh, 
the t ti, which t zero, so in this case thirty seven, uh, times uh, sixty nine mod b. So take basically thirty seven times sixty nine. Take the last two digits, which are in this case fifty three, and then you take this this intermediate value, this ki, multiply it by our modulus. So now ki in n times b to the power of i, b zero. So it's just ki times n at this point. Uh, this is a, this is a multiple multiple of the modulus. So as before, any multiple of the modulus is zero. So this number is actually equal to zero in the finite field. So we can then we we add was effectively zero, but is this number to our t value, and something magical happens, which is that the the last word of our t value is now zero, which is very useful because uh, basically if we now we do a, a right shift or a division. Um, then it will basically it will actually divide cleanly. Uh, so what we uh, so the goal here is actually going to be to make the right two words of the t value zero. And the, in this first step, we we just did the first word. So let's we'll do it again. Uh, I equals one. So we're going to take the t one uh, t one uh, multiply it by our n prime value. Take the last two digits. So that that in this case is ninety three. Uh, times um, 69, and the last two digits of that number are 17. Uh, multiply that by the modulus. So we have this, this, this special zero value that uh, we then add to t, and it sets the, the second word to zero. And so now we have this number, 3252, which has the right two, right two digits being zero, and we divide by r. And so this is where the r inverse comes in, where basically, in the finite field, we just did a division, uh, which is in this case just a right shift by four digits or or two words, uh, and that division results in a number times r inverse or a number divided by r in the finite field. But it also, it's what's really nice is that the concrete representation of that value is now much smaller. Instead of being four words, it's two words, which means that basically we've we have done kind of the most important to us step of the reduction, which is get it smaller. Now, in this case, like just as before, uh, this gives you a mostly reduced result. In this case, the, the reduced result is going to be between uh, 0 and 2 times the modulus, so that we need up to 1 subtraction. And if in this case, we actually do need a subtraction because it's larger than modulus currently, and the result is uh, 281. And that 281 value, uh, as, as promised, uh, if you multiply it by r, so 281 is is uh, kind of the uh, is the reduction of u times r inverse. But if you multiply it by r, which r, r is simply 10,000, you get and mo and take that mo number modulo r uh, r prime, you get 2405, which if you recall from the Barrett formula, is the exact same number as we got. Uh, from that classical reduction formula. So this, this Montgomery formula really does do it. It says it does. It computes uh, this REDC u equals u times r modulus, or sorry, u times r inverse mod n. So there is also additionally a combined multiplication and reduction formula. And I won't walk through this one, but I, what, what, what I want to note is that this this algorithm is very similar to our reduction algorithm, except for on line three, there's a multiplication, or in line three and line four. So basically, instead of just doing this trick of setting the right bits of your uh, number to zero, you're setting the right bits of the multiplication of your two numbers, so u, ui, and, uh, ui and v0, or ui and v in this case. So the multiplication result you're saying those right bits to zero, and then you're shifting right in every loop. So the two modifications from the previous algorithm here to this one here are that instead of just using, instead of just doing this like set right right word to zero uh, trick to, on the uh, on the input, you're doing it on the result of the multiplication of the input value, and then additionally, you're this this algorithm here instead of doing a final addition by r on line 5 it does a uh, division by r 
uh, or division by B on line four, which over the course of the entire algorithm, uh, doing uh, n iterations of division by B is the same as dividing by B to the power of n. And so it gives you the, the same result, but it's just done iter iterative, iteratively. And this kind of iterative computation is what you're going to see for basically any software implementation, because basically it allows you to avoid these large intermediate results, like we saw in the, the formal uh, or the pseudocode for the Barrett reduction. All right. And so this is kind of the other one. I, and this one, the, the, the Montgomery multiplication for me personally was a bit hard, was a bit hard for me to understand at first. I'm curious if people have questions. Then let's talk about um, a quick comparison before. So I mentioned before that you know Montgomery Montgomery form, form is the most common in cryptographic implementations. You'll see it's you know, it's what we use personally in our risk zero um, uh, zkVM and zk cryptography implementations. Um, this is a quick comparison of the number of multiplications, which multiplications being uh, actual like machine multiplications, what your computer will com will compute. Um, uh, how many multiplications each algorithm takes, uh, and the classical form takes n times n times n plus two point five, uh, and it also requires uh, n divisions. So basically, where n is the number of words. So in this case, we're talking about our four our four word uh, numbers are going to have you know four times four plus two point five uh, multiplications and four divisions for classical, which those four divisions especially are kind of a major issue for performance. Uh, whereas uh, Barrett reduction has slightly more multiplications, but no divisions. So it's n times n plus 4. And Montgomery form has fewer multiplications than that. So basically, it's n times n plus 1. And so Montgomery is, for most cases, the fastest uh, formula to be using for multiplication. Um, there are also some pre-computations that are involved, and additionally, uh, some restrictions. Uh, Precomputations are important if you want to do many modula, many modulus. Although in cryptography, we usually pick a field and stick with it, so we'll only have one. And we can do this precomputation uh, even at compile time and have the constants already pr provided for us in our code. Um, and then there's restrictions about how large your numbers can be before you reduce them, um, which can also come into play. But the 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 key we want to focus on here basically is that like is that Barrett and Montgomery form both have uh, both avoided divisions, which is which is which is a major key. Montgomery form is is generally faster, but then re but requires it uh, your inputs to be translated into Montgomery form before you can compute on them. Uh, we'll talk about. I also wanted to briefly mention some other alternative uh, multiplication methods. So, as you saw before, the the asymptotic runtime. For all of these algorithms is O of n squared. Um, as you know, n, the number of limbs gets larger and larger and larger. So if you have, uh, we go from having, you know, one words, one word integers to two words to four words to eight words. If we have, you know, massive integers like like our 40, 40 96 bit RSA keys, or maybe if what integers are even larger for uh, other for some other algorithm we're working on, um, you start to care about your asymptotic runtime. In the number of limbs, multiplication was for a very, was quite for quite a long time believed to be uh, have a lower bound of of a lower to be to have an asymptotic runtime of O of n squared, like no matter what you did. However, in 1960, uh, Karatsuba discovered a divide and conquer method that has a runtime of O of n to the log to the log base two of three, so about 1.58. Uh, which you know is better than better than Oven squared. Uh, after that, uh, Tom Cook uh, created a, a kind of similar but but improved version of this kind of method. And then later later still, uh, some folks discovered uh, NTT based methods for multiplication, which have even better asymptotic runtime. However, all of these formulas are concretely slower than. Uh, Montgomery multiplication and uh, classic and schoolbook multiplication, 
until you get to fairly large integers. So for Katsuba multiplication, it's kind of has it's it's actually Katsuba and Tum Cook can be applied to things that are kind of reasonable. So like you know if you have a uh, a six word if you have like eight word uh, numbers, it might it might already start to apply. Uh, whereas NTT based methods really don't apply until you get into the order of maybe uh, a thousand words or more. And so if you have like a 496 bit RSA key, you might use Tube Cook. If you have much larger numbers, even still, you might start using the NTT based methods. But concretely, um, Montgomery multiplication, Barrett, redu Barrett uh, uh, classical multiplication, and Barrett reduction are going to be faster for most of your, most of your needs. Uh, for most of our, the, the numbers we work with today in cryptography. And that's all that I have uh, for y'all. I'm curious if you'll have any last minute, last questions. Thanks, Victor. There are a couple of questions in the chat. Um, and maybe oh, sorry. either Vanky or okay. Victor can speak those out loud because the chat won't be in the recording. Yes, that'd be really helpful. Yeah, uh, there's Venki here. Let me let me repeat those questions. Sorry, yes, I yes. put on chat because there was noise outside my room. Um, mm -hmm. So one question is: Is can we since this Montgomery representation is an alternative representation of the normal of the integers in the in the field modulo n? Can we safely say that the operation, the multiplication equivalent operation in this alternative field is uh, your uh, uh, multiply I take any two elements, uh, XR and YR, and form the product XR, YR, R inverse mod N. Is that the operation in this alternative field? Because that ensures that closure property is there. XR, YR, R inverse is equal to X, Y, R. Yes. So, right. So the relevant, oh, no, pass away. Yeah, that one, that one. Yeah, that's the one. That's the slide. Also, that's the reduction. Then there's also this one as well. Um, well, especially the answer is the answer is yes. Especially this this algorithm here, this combined multiplication and reduction, can be is basically this algorithm is closed over the Montgomery represented Montgomery Montgomery uh, form integers. Okay, and I had a second question. Uh, where you were comparing the different operations mm -hmm. and I mean the different other algorithms on that slide. I would like to ask about one more algorithm if you knew about it or if you have any thoughts mm -hmm. about it, and that is using the fast Fourier transform algorithm for multiplying two integers. Would that mm -hmm. be an O of n log n complexity, which may be way better than these? Uh, so that's the, um, in this case, uh, the NTT is what I'm referring to this. I think I think we're referring to the same thing. This uh, in this case, I'm talking about this uh, like NTT based methods are in my. I think we we're we also we we're also talking about as well. Um, and yes, they have uh, O of n times n n times log n times log log n uh, runtime, and they are asymptotically faster, but concretely slower until you get to much to get into very large integer sizes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've got one other question if, uh, if there's time. I know we're a minute over the, the time limit. It, it's not a deal if, if there isn't time, but if there is like, um, let me know. Yeah, what's the question? Yeah, so the question is just more about um, like how this actually translates to to like in practice. Like, say for example, like the actual mm -hmm. um, like finite field arithmetic and reduction, all this kind of stuff inside of the risk zero BM. Is this mm -hmm. just used for generating the proof? And when you're doing the actual like computation, you're not doing this reduction because I'm trying to like wrap my head around how you would actually get useful results when doing the like the actual multiplication and then doing the reduction like i it, it's it, i'm just basically just asking the question of like how this translates in, into practice it might be out of scope of, of the uh, of this talk so if it is just feel free to to 
um, to so I, I can speak to that um, really quickly. Uh, this is Jeremy here. Um, so so in in terms of all of the every place we use finite fields in the entire prover, everything is always in a Montgomery form. Um, there's only a couple of places where we, you know, and like the constants are actually pre-translated from it, it, by the compiler into Montgomery form. Like everything is everything is generally done in Montgomery form wherever possible. Um, in terms of the guest, the um, the there isn't really. I mean, that that's just a normal risk five machine, and so you could write Montgomery form or not. Um, we do also currently have a finite field accelerator, which does the work in the circuit. And so that doesn't use Montgomery form because arithmetic circuits, it doesn't make sense. They're already natively operate over finite fields. So there's, it, there's, it's, it, the, 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 there's no need to do a reduction because it's just, it's all in finite fields in the first place. Um, but yeah, so basically all of the implementation everywhere in our current stack uses Montgomery form for all the work. Does that answer your question? Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely enough for now. I think I need to dig more into some of the concepts a little bit more. Yeah. To... Well, if there's no more questions, I guess we can wrap up. I will echo Monty's comment in the chat that we are going to be hosting a dev meetup at ETH Denver. Um, so you can find details for that on Discord and on Twitter. And we'll get the recording and the slides up both on YouTube and on riskzero.com slash study club, um, likely by the end of the day, but certainly um, shortly. So thanks, Victor, and thanks everyone for coming.